Hi, and welcome to Luxury Live. I am your hostess, Andrea Fay, and each week I go live and I talk to you about special topics regarding luxury and living a luxurious lifestyle. Now, I will show you where I'm in, at in a minute. It's very, I guess, sleek is the word we're going for today. It's very high end and swanky. Yes, it's very swanky. Hi, I see Ginger join. Thanks for joining. So yes, Luxury Live Miami. I'm very excited for this. <laughs> Hello, Ginger. Thank you for being the first to join Luxury Live. And I'll send you a black card. Oh my gosh, Kate. Hey, thanks for joining Luxury Live. So yeah, this is a little bit of trial and error because I am out in Miami. I'm in downtown Miami at this really cute bar called Sugar. And, um, but of course I still wanted to go live stream right on time. Um, so you can let me know if I need to speak louder or anything and I'm happy to listen. But for now we just have to figure it out. <laughs> um, yes. How has everyone been? I've heard some feedback from a lot of you on how you're doing new things to live a luxurious life and you're feeling inspired. <laughs> oh. So, speaking of luxury, I just got a glass of rosé. So, cheers. Pour your own cocktail, glass of champagne, um, tea if you don't want to drink champagne. But, yeah, and sit back and enjoy. Hi, Mickey. Thanks for joining. Okay, so everyone knows the protocol. You can ask me any style questions as you go along. But of course tonight I do have a special topic and it's just how to merge like different inspirations, different aesthetics into one signature style. So I teach a lot of classes about and workshops and I talk a lot about how to develop your design aesthetic, how to develop your signature style, how to develop your personal style, um, and then maybe kind of the next step from it is how to go into different styles but still maintain your own um, like aesthetic at the same time, like how to kind of merge and do different things but still be um, you know one signature style, identifiable, have an aesthetic, have a definition. I thought Luxury Live Miami was perfect for that because uh, it is a jump from the style that you all have been seeing me wear for you know the past few years running a business in San Francisco but I still know that I'm still at my signature even though here it's a different culture uh, different weather um, much more beach but also, yeah, I'll talk about Miami style in a minute here too, because I'm obsessed with it. But, you know, it's still me. Like, I'm still coming through and I'm still, like, you know, feeling like myself. Building outfits that are unique still have to do with myself. And that's the goal that I want for you as you build your personal style, is that even if you travel, even if you go to different events or types of things, even if you go to different cultures or different like yeah weather conditions or anything that you can still stay true to yourself self-expression and have a signature aesthetic so yes that is what tonight's topic is about how are we doing can you guys hear me okay I feel like it got louder as soon as I went live ginger asks what are you wearing tonight well maybe I can show you I am wearing a jumpsuit. So, it has a sash in the back, so. It has a slit, so it's full length pants with a slit. And I've got my 
Manolo heels, and I also have my beautiful Salvador Ferragamo clutch. So, this. Yes. And I will show you where, a little bit of a view of where I'm at in a minute. Okay, so what I'm about to tell you is maybe a little bit controversial for me at least. <laughs> All the rules I've given you about defining your color palette, defining your silhouette, being really strict, figuring out, honing everything in, the minimalism, really figuring out each of the components and being strict within it, figuring out your mood, all of the, your vocabulary, special style definitions, you can break those. And, oh, <laughs> the cheers to that. <laughs> the key to that though is, I, it's one of the more complicated things that I learn in design school is that you know, you learn to build, you learn the strength of color, you learn the strength of honing and defining things, and cohesiveness is really important. But cohesiveness also isn't necessarily as straightforward as following rules for what your style is. Um, it's more like telling a story, and in school we learn a lot about what the narrative is, and learning about mood and narrative has a lot to do with that and um, so that's part of it as well but I think I'm sharing that with you because that is kind of the key thing for keeping your same aesthetic but also keeping your same signature style but also starting to differentiate and experiment and test things as well we've got Ray of Sunshine we've got <laughs> These are my live audience right now, which actually they did promise to join for the dance party. The dance party is a little experimental considering we're in a public space, but um, we'll better. See. It's better than it doesn't matter. It's luxury live, it's real. <laughs> All right, so yes, you have the rules set in place that I always work on with my clients the color palette the silhouette, the mood, the you know, defining, the context, your audience, your lifestyle, but then you can branch out from that. Once you know your signature, you can kind of test things and that's really also the key of making your looks more interesting overall, making it a little bit more individual and unique. All right, so I got our eyes from Kate. I love you, Kate. Thanks for joining. Raya Sunshine asks, is this better to do once you feel like you already have your style established? I... There, yes and no to that question. Um, I would say... <laughs> yes, it's, I think it's really important to establish your style and make some concrete decisions first. Um, I think my post today on my newsletter about minimalism is a little bit about that too because you know the more you can hone in on what your style is the more you can edit really get clear cut on some points it's harder to do that in my opinion I think than to just and I mean Rhea you and I talked about this today like Edit, having so many ideas and being creative, you have a million ideas and you're like, let's do this, let's do this, and let's incorporate this idea and this. But the power of editing and cohesiveness, and the more you can hone in on what your style is, the more you can really go backwards. Like it's, easy, it's harder to go and hone in than it is to go backwards. And, you know, once you know like the foundation, you can always build upon it. Um, so, Raya Sunshine, I'm new to style. I, I, I mean, what I have to say about being new to style is everyone has it in them already, 
uh, but some, but like anything that you put your mind to, it can be a lot of work. It can be a commitment. It can be goal setting, especially if you want to, in, within your style to invest in more expensive things over, like buy more high-end designer things or more quality, unique things. So it can be a lot of work. Um, so even if you want have a natural understanding of style or if it's part of your life anyways it can still be like a lot of effort and work to learn <laughs> cases you're new to clothing rail <laughs> yes. well, ginger says well <laughs> yeah thank you guys see matt's join hi matt wave so, Matt just joined. He's my boyfriend. We were talking about couples clothing today. I was like, yeah, we're like, cause tonight I think we're all out and we're all kind of cohesive. Like we're all kind of more or less dressed in black and metallics. Probably cause I, to some degree, cause I control freak the style situation. But yeah, we're talking to Matt about how I make our outfits cohesive but different. <laughs> All right. Kate says, what if I like lots of things? How can I pick one to hone in on? My answer for you for that one is if there are lots of different things that you like, those are all different parts to your style. They're all different inspirations. I wouldn't necessarily rule any of them out. Um, I mean, an easy way to start honing in, of course, is to my whole decluttering process, getting rid of what isn't part of your style or not as strong. Um, I think honing in, part of it is just really figuring out what are the best parts of my style. So. Whereas like all the unique components to the things that you like should all be factored in over time and that helps to enrich your style, make it, you know, more than just like say I'm following minimalist style and that's all I'm doing or I'm following, you know, some style trend and that's all I'm focusing on because that doesn't get you your own unique style. That gets you following a definition, someone else's definition or a popular trend. So I would definitely you know, keep everything that inspires you in mind. An easy way to do this is a Pinterest board where you have all the, my production crew is playing with the lighting right now. <laughs> it's looking good. Um, yeah, like a Pinterest board is a good way to do this too, where you can, take it. as many crazy images as you want like pull from all the odd things that inspire you too um, but once you have it all in images on Pinterest you can start to delete what's not as strong um, but I guess the antithesis to what you're asking Kate is sometimes you find out more about your style when you do something that you don't think you like but you have a hunch about it and you hone in on it and you learn something more. Like, I did this with my latex project a couple years ago. I worked with latex and stuff, which to me, I hadn't, I didn't really understand how latex worked or what people used it for, but, and I still don't necessarily think it's part of my style, but learning how something unusual that wasn't new to me worked and pulling it in and trying to incorporate it into my own style actually helped. So, um, you know, Really, you could probably pick, you can pick what you like the most of all the things that you like, or you can pick something that just inspires you in the moment and see if it helps lead, lead you in a certain direction. Hope that helps. Slave YG just joined. Thank you for joining. Thank you for the questions, guys. I probably won't stay on for too much longer just because of the situation of being in a public bar and everything, but I will give you guys, as promised, a little dance party. Yes. And 
a little bit of a tour. So I think I'll start with the tour. So for those of you that just tuned in, I'm at Sugar Bar. It's in downtown Miami. So it's really pretty. I think, oh yeah, we found this. That's a pretty badass pool somebody has. Talk about luxury. We're also speculating what this is. Some private area with couches. It's all water. So yeah. <laughs> That's where I am. This is probably one of my first vacations in a while where it's like tropical weather and I'm here with my two girlfriends, known each other for probably a decade and we, the three of us haven't hung out for probably half a decade so we spent some beach time, we went speed boating around the, I guess the port of Miami, so really nice, relaxing. It's really important when you're busy to give yourself a little bit of time to relax and recuperate and you know think about everything you've been doing, talk to your girlfriends about everything you've been doing and you know run ideas off of each other. So all right. Well, true to Luxury Live, we will still give you your little dance party. Uh, and I do have my production crew slash audience slash BFFs coming to join me. So here you go. <laughs> I guess can we can back this up a little bit. Is that going to ruin things? Yeah. All right. <laughs> are you guys dancing with us? I hope you are. Oh yeah, they all they all have their luxury on. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get on the middle aerial? Break it All right, down. arrow's gonna break it down for us. Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Oh! <laughs> I guess I should give Ariel. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Luxury Life Dance Party. I know if those of you who tuned in last week, the dance party is the new thing, actually for two weeks now, so. I love it! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those are my girls. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so any other questions? Uh, yes. Well, thank you for logging in, everyone. Cheers to luxury. 
I will cover more on this topic of aesthetic building. It's, I guess, you know, it goes into all the different things. I guess one last thing on aesthetic building for me is, I'll tell you about how I built out my aesthetic a little bit differently for Miami. And, you know, it has to do with color and, you know, I'm playing with bolder colors, pushing the confines of my color palette with the bolder colors, but still keeping some of the similar shapes. Definitely emphasizing the bling side of things a little bit more. But one thing I love about Miami too is it's really modern and they love like their new materials, shiny things. They love their bling. They love to be like flashy and exuberant and but there is definitely a strong modern element to Miami and I think that's why I love it here so much. Um, so anyways. Thank you all for tuning in. Love you too, Ginger. Uh, yes, and if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to modernaf.style newsletter. It went out today and there is a new post each week. All right, cheers.